Now I have the pleasure, the great pleasure, of introducing our convocation speaker, Fred Kohler. Fred is Vice President and Intextron, and Executive Director of the Intextron Institute for Biomolecular Research, whose mission is to foster academic collaborations that both enhance Intextron's technology portfolio and advance applied uh, academic research. Prior to joining Intextron, Keller was the founding executive on uh, Syntelect. Fred holds a PhD in biochemical engineering and a BS degree in chemical engineering, both from McCormick. He serves on the advisory board of the Masters of Biotechnology program. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you Fred Kohler. Members of the administration and faculty, families and friends, and most of all, new graduates, I appreciate greatly the honor and privilege of being before you today. I'm sorry that you didn't draw a Conan O'Brien or a Jay Leno, or even a former president of the United States, but you picked a school in the Midwest, so this is what you get. <laughs> so when I started writing this address, I made myself two promises. The first was that I was not going to use some tired old cliches, and the second was that I was not going to speak one second longer than I was supposed to. So the bad news is I didn't keep both promises. The good news is the one I'm going to keep is to not speak too long. So with that, let's get started. Cliche number one, I really think you should try to go beyond your comfort zone. So this is probably a new version of a tired old cliche about not getting stuck in a rut, but I think it's very important advice because only by going outside your comfort zone can you really expand your comfort zone beyond what it is. So I implore you to take on new challenges, meet new people, go new places, do new things, and I promise that you'll be rewarded in things that you learn and uh, what comes out of that. So early in my career, twice in fact, I did this sort of thing. I left very well-paying, very comfortable jobs uh, to go out on a limb and try something new. The second time, in fact, I was so foolish that I went out and started a brand new company from scratch. And as my co-founder, academic co-founder Bernard Paulson likes to say, uh, the company for the first several months was nothing but Fred driving around in a red sports car with a briefcase. And that's pretty much what it was. And I quickly realized how quickly I had gotten outside my comfort zone in many different ways. I remember those days very fondly, though. It was a great learning experience for me. I remember them very fondly because I had purchased my first cell phone as part of this experience. And it worked nothing like a communicator on Star Trek, even though I learned how to flip that thing open and close as good as Captain Kirk. But technology has come a long way, uh, I'm certain. So with that, I will say that uh, you should go out of of your comfort zone, just like I'm doing here today. I never had any intention of giving a commencement address, but here I am, and who knows, maybe this will become a good new career for me. So this leads me to cliche number two, which is you must set goals for yourself. And I don't mean the kind of lame responses you give in a job interview when somebody asks you where you want to be in five years, or the kinds of things you think up when you're getting drunk on New Year's Eve. That's certainly not the kind of goals I'm talking about here. Uh, it's really about setting goals that are achievable and meaningful to you. And I promise you that if you don't set these goals for yourself, someone else will set goals for you. And it won't nearly be as satisfying working towards someone else's goals as it would be working towards your own. So very important to, to set goals and to set new ones as you achieve the goals that you've already set for yourself. When I started my career in biotechnology, I entered the field with big dreams, big hopes, of making big things happen very quickly. And it turns out that there's something you have to learn about setting goals. And inherently, we tend to overestimate in a big way what we can achieve in the short term. We set these goals for next week, next month, next quarter, and we invariably fall short of these goals. Deadlines get missed, and it can be very frustrating and discouraging, as it became for me early in my career. But the thing that uh, is, is bringing hope is, Despite our inability to project what we can achieve in the short term, 
it turns out that we significantly underestimate what we can achieve in the long term. So there is definitely hope. I'm only 20 years into my career and I've seen dramatic things happen in my field already. So 20 years may seem long to some of you, but uh, people tell me I'm not even halfway. So I don't know if that's good or bad. But things that were science fiction when I first started are science fact today, and it's very exciting. As a case in point, I didn't go to the library, crack any books, or use any pencil and paper in preparing this address. And hard to believe, but I got through my entire college career without the internet or without Google. So things are very different today. So bad technology jokes aside, let me give you a real technology from the biotechnology field. And one of the advances that I think is, is dramatic and going to impact all our lives. So back in 2003, the government completed the Human Genome Project. We had set out a plan to sequence a human genome. And the first one took 13 years and $3 billion of government investment to complete. When this project began, Nobody knew how or when it would be done, and technologies had to be invented along the way to get anywhere near achieving the goal. Earlier this year, amazingly, several companies announced the ability to sequence an entire human genome in one day for less than $5,000. This is a remarkable capability that is having a real impact in medicine today. Just a few months ago, I was at a Cancer Society meeting where we heard about patient after patient who had a disease that the doctors could not diagnose. They were stifled. And they took a piece of the tumor, sent it out for this new genome sequencing technology, and were able to identify the underlying mutation in their disease, which immediately led to a treatment that was affected. So patients that had no hope all of a sudden were going back home from the hospital. And these technological advancements are driven by people like yourself people that have passion for technology and engineering and have the ability to make difficult things work given enough time and hard effort. So there is a lot of benefit over the long term for the pursuits that we undertake. This takes us to cliche number three, and I promise my last one. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes, a lot of them, in fact. And being conscientious and diligent people, as you are, these mistakes will trouble you greatly as you, as you make them. But I promise you, they are not insurmountable things when they happen. I had the good fortune of having many good mentors along the way who gave me great advice and helped me overcome many challenges, some of them on the stage behind me here today. One thing I'll say is mentors can give great advice, so be sure to listen, but don't believe that they know everything better than you. And for all the good advice I received, I received plenty of bad advice too. So the challenge to you will be to decide which is which and to plot your own course accordingly because it's only you that will have to live with your consequences. So in closing, to be honest, I don't really remember who was up here 20 years ago when I was sitting in your chair. I don't remember what advice was given. But I do remember one thing very, very clearly. I felt extreme pride in having completed my higher education. I, I can't believe how proud I felt to be complete with uh, the education I'd received at this institution. And I want to impart to you that the pride you feel today is well earned, well deserved, and it will be with you for a long time to come as you build your careers on the solid foundation you have with this higher education. So with that in closing, I wish you health, happiness, and great success.